Gene Munster is one of the few on Wall Street who actually gets Tesla. Here he's got a few hot takes. Check these out. Tesla September earnings. First question on the call was related to the timing of when the drivers will be removed from Austin. Austin, of course, is their first robo taxi market. We haven't had many updates over the past few months on that. And Elon mentioned that by the end of the year, there will be some pockets of Austin that will not have drivers in it. And that may come across as a disappointment for some investors who were hoping that they weren't going to have drivers uh, two months ago. And so uh, the reality is that the reason why they are not going to, they're going to keep these drivers around, at least in some parts, is because safety is paramount. Uh, and Elon talked about this. I absolutely agree that if they have any sort of mess up, it is going to cause some significant brand damage impact to consumer confidence, and therefore, they just can't risk that. And so, well, it may be a little bit of a disappointment today. I think that the reality is it's absolutely the right call down the road. There were some positive updates related to uh, Robotax. So they talked about adding eight to 10 new cities by the end of this year. Of course, they'll be very small, but eight to 10 new cities. Previously, all they said was 20 to 23 by the end of 26. So that's a little bit of a uh, clarity in terms of updated timing. And as far as production of the cyber cab, they said that's in Q2. Previously, they had said sometime in 2026. So it is in line with that, but a little bit earlier than what I thought. When they say 2026 before, I assume it's at the very end of 26, but Q2 would be a little bit earlier. And kind of ramping and volume production, they said hope at the end of 26. And so that's a positive sign in terms of how they feel more broadly about the robo taxi rollout. They're adding cities, they're ramping production of the cyber cab, which they'll be taking most of that uh, production for their own fleet initially. So I think that in aggregate, that was the pressure point and that timing of the drivers. But I think if you take a step back, it's reasonable that they're doing that. And they're also signaling that they are increasingly confident in terms of the uh, bigger picture opportunity on RoboTaxi. So I'm just going to look at my notes here and, and uh, check off some other um, kind of important pieces. Uh, one, uh, this is now we're moving beyond the pressure point. Uh, the question about the more affordable model, I'll just cut right to the chase. It's the cheaper Model Y and Model 3. That was most people's suspicion going into this call. There's a little bit of a hope that that wasn't going to be the case, that they would surprise us, but uh, here we are. Uh, those are the two, in fact, uh, more affordable vehicles. Uh, deliveries for next year. Now, we didn't get much on this. Elon did talk about over the next 24 months wanting to increase production as fast as they can, but that doesn't really help us get a sense about what deliveries are going to be next year. They gave the standard language around the broader economic environment. The street is in print at plus 17% growth. The whisper number is plus 10%. My thinking is it's probably going to be plus five. I think we are going to grow next year, but I don't think it's going to be uh, meaningful. We didn't get surprised by a new, more affordable model that was going to ramp earlier in the year that could get to that 17%. I suspect that the street numbers on deliveries are going to come down. doesn't really matter to the stock, but just as a, a housekeeping item, uh, the delivery outlook for next year is probably going to be more modest than what the street is modeling in. Uh, and two other uh, topics, one in terms of uh, margins. So the automobile gross margins, X credits, 15.4%. That was below the street at 156 but it was a sequential improvement from 15 in the June quarter. It was 14 point, or excuse me, 12.5% in the March quarter, so 12.5 to 15, 15.4, it's moving in the right direction. And given the more affordable model is in fact the Model Y and Model 3, I suspect that margins are gonna kind of remain in this level through the uh, 2026. So, uh, which gets to the cash piece, which continues to expand in, in a positive related, they've got 41 billion in cash right now. That's up 400 uh, million quarter on quarter. It's a lot of cash and equivalents. That's about double, or not quite double. Uh, Ford and GM have about 25 billion each, uh, but they've got a lot of cash, a lot more cash in their traditional automotive and just a DNA for going for innovation too. But that they do have plenty of cash. They've got the margins to support it, to continue to go after this ambitious uh, autonomy, these three autonomy uh, goals. 
which leads us to the final point, which is uh, Optimus. Uh, yes, I left it last because it is the furthest opportunity out there. Previously, I'd said a million units uh, in five years. Uh, he talked about, we got a little bit more clarity. We're going to have Optimus 3 shown for the first time in March, February, March. And hopefully, it was his words, in production by the end of the year. Uh, he also talked about Optimus 4 selling 10 million units, no time frame, and Optimus 5 uh, 50 to 100 million units. Uh, numbers get kind of goofy. Let's try to put some sensibility around this and just say they do 5 million uh, units a year. Uh, if they're doing 5 million units a year at $25,000 each, that's about $125 billion in revenue. That effectively double the business where it's at today. Of course, it's going to be a decade Plus, I mean, they're not doing 5 million cars a year. They're doing 2 million cars a year. It's going to be a long time before they're doing 5 million optimists a year. So still not worth putting too much into the model, but still definitely worth owning the stock for that, if that makes any sense, because I think it still represents some nice optionality. On behalf of Pressure Points, I'm Gene. Bye for now. Some Tesla investors are panicking because drivers aren't being removed from Austin Robo taxis yet, but slow and careful now means explosive scaling later and no one else can manufacture millions of autonomous vehicles per year like Tesla can. Tesla's cautious approach keeping safety drivers in Austin looks like a delay, but I actually think it's the right strategy for avoiding catastrophic brand damage before the exponential scale phase begins. Gene Munster points out the first earnings call question was about timing for removing drivers from Austin, with Elon saying by the end of the year, there will be some pockets of Austin that will not have drivers. This did disappoint some investors who were hoping drivers would be gone months ago. The impatience around Austin drivers reveals how investors misunderstand technology scaling. You don't want to rush autonomous vehicles. One high profile accident with nationwide news coverage could set the entire industry back years and destroy consumer confidence in Tesla's system specifically. Think about what's at stake. If a Tesla robotaxi without a safety driver kills someone in a preventable accident, it's not just going to be awful PR, it's potentially regulatory intervention, lawsuits, cities blocking deployments, and consumers refusing to use the service. The cost of moving too fast is existential. The cost of moving slower is just time. Waymo spent years with safety drivers before removing them. Tesla doing the same isn't behind schedule, it's following a proven path. One of the differences here though, is that Tesla has far more vehicles collecting data and improving their systems faster than Waymo ever could. Tesla's city expansion timeline is actually accelerating, going from zero to eight to 10 cities by year end, shows Tesla's confident in the rollout trajectory, even while being cautious about safety drivers. You don't aggressively expand geography if you think the technology isn't ready. You expand when you know it works, but want to be careful about execution. Also, CyberCab production in Q2 2026 is an inflection point everyone should focus on. Right now, Tesla is testing with their existing fleet. Once they start manufacturing purpose-built robotaxis without steering wheels optimized for cost per mile, the economics dramatically improve and scaling accelerates. This is the classic exponential curve that people always get wrong. It looks linear or even disappointing at first. Oh, they're only in Austin with drivers. Oh, they're only expanding to eight to 10 cities. Oh, production doesn't ramp until late 2026. But once the technology is proven safe and the manufacturing is ramped, growth goes vertical. You go from a few cars on the road to potentially hundreds of thousands within a year or two. The safety first approach actually enables faster long-term scaling because you avoid the catastrophic setbacks that force you to pause and rebuild trust. Better to spend an extra six to 12 months with safety drivers than to scale confidently and then remove them prematurely. Have an accident and spend two to three years recovering from regulatory and consumer backlash. But the real competitive advantage is having manufacturing capacity to scale faster than anyone else once the technology works. Tesla can scale to millions of autonomous vehicles within 18 months once the technology is ready because they're already manufacturing 2 million sensor equipped cars annually while competitors are stuck at thousands of vehicles with no path to mass production. The manufacturing advantage is the moat everyone overlooks while debating AI capabilities. Autonomous driving technology eventually gets solved by multiple companies. It's engineering, not magic, but manufacturing millions of vehicles profitably is something only Tesla and traditional automakers can do. And traditional automakers aren't building for autonomy at scale. 
Tesla produces 2 million vehicles annually with all the hardware needed for full self-driving. Every Model 3, Model Y, Model S, and Model X rolling off the line has cameras, computing power, and sensors that can potentially become a robotaxi with a software update. That's an install base growing by 2 million units per year. Compare that to Waymo at a few thousand vehicles total after years of deployment. Waymo's technology might be on paper ahead of Tesla today, but they have no path to manufacturing at scale. They're converting existing vehicles from manufacturers who aren't optimizing for autonomous operation. That's expensive, slow, and fundamentally doesn't scale as well. The Uber comparison is devastating for competitors. Uber's entire competitive advantage is a network of 1 million drivers globally. Tesla can manufacture more than 1 million vehicles in six months. In a single year of production, Tesla could theoretically deploy a robotaxi fleet larger than Uber's entire driver network. Once Tesla proves the technology works safely in Austin and initial expansion cities, the scaling curve becomes limited only by manufacturing capacity, not technology or capital. Tesla can manufacture millions of robotaxis per year profitably. No one else can do that. It doesn't matter if competitors have comparable technology if they can't manufacture vehicles at scale to deploy that technology. This is why the Austin driver timeline doesn't matter strategically. Whether drivers come out in December 2025 or March 2026 is irrelevant to the 2027 to 2030 scaling trajectory. What matters is Tesla building 2 million potentially autonomous vehicles this year, ramping cybercab production next year, and having the manufacturing and financial capacity to deploy millions of robotaxis once the technology is proven. That capability is unique and determinative for who wins autonomous ride hailing long term. If you found this video of value and want to help us hit our 100k subscriber goal, why not consider hitting subscribe? Cheers.